It's Friday night. You're three beers and two episodes of Community into your binge watch evening when you decide to fire up Tinder. Because that's just how fucking rad your life is. Because they make me look good. That's not relevant. Ah, welcome back, Jeffrey. How was your. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh my god, even his shadow! Look at his shadow! Oh, and what's this? You match with a cute girl a geographically reasonable distance away from you. And, oh boy, what luck. She's not a prostitute, a bot, or a kidney thief. So you get to chatting. Things are going really well at the start. No kids. No obvious mental illness. Functionally literate. And what's better, she doesn't care that most major airlines classify you as livestock or that you live in an apartment so small that an international human rights tribunal would classify it as torture. <laughs> Things are going really well until the conversation turns to food. And then, and then BAM! She's a vegan! Oh, I wanted to know about her and I got what I deserved. A vegan. A gluten-free vegan. A, a vegan. So you're basically left with two choices. One, realize that your lifestyles are incongruous and simply part ways. Or two, change everything you are as a person to fit their unique dietary choices. Well, so to help you adapt to your new culinary identity, we're going to make Georgian bean bread today. Lo Biani. Or not, or not, I don't know. I don't think anyone even watches this shit. Wait. What, really? That's it? Oh man, that's some bullshit. That's right guys, it is that easy. For those of you who don't know, Lobiani is basically khachapuri, which we made in this episode. Uh, except you replace the cheese with beans. The beans, Lobio, are what we made in this episode. Uh, but if you don't want to go through the trouble of doing that, you can just boil, spice, and mash up any kind of beans you want and use them. I mean... It's, it's really basic. So here we have the correct ingredient measurements list for making Lobiani dough. Feel free to pause the video and write them down. As a side note, this dough makes excellent pizzas. So here I have the sifted flour, the salt, the yeast, which we bloomed with some of our 400 grams of warm water and a drizzle of honey, and olive oil, which we will add later. Add the bloomed yeast to the dough, and then begin to mix. The salt and a splash of olive oil will be incorporated later, once the flour, yeast, and water have come together to form a rough, shaggy dough. And for those of you who know a thing or two about baking, you'll probably realize what I'm just starting to realize here, and that's that my dough is wet. Like, really wet. Like, I think I screwed up. I've made a huge mistake. I now know in retrospect that this is due to the fact that I am a mathematical wizard. And when I incorrectly converted the liquid ratios from another recipe, I ended up with an additional 120 grams of water. This just goes to show that no dough is beyond rescue. Just add flour if wet, add water if dry. Now I'm going to add even more olive oil to the dough before my last round of kneading. The oil really helps the dough to be more workable, but be careful not to add too much. The dough should be quite tacky, but not overly sticky. If you're worried about the dough being too wet, let rest for an hour and then check again once the dough is evenly hydrated. Your dough should look something like this, maybe a bit smoother if you kneaded it for longer than I did. Cover and let sit at room temperature until doubled in size. Three hours later. Uh, voila. Now you want to gently knock down the dough from the sides of its container. Careful not to needlessly traumatize the dough by tearing its gluten strands or enrolling it in an all-boys jazz tap ensemble in third grade. Now you want to move the dough to a well-floured work surface and cut into even portions, each large enough to make a single lobiani. You should be able to eyeball this without too much trouble, and given my natural inclination and skills at proportioning and ratios, I was able to do this visually. <laughs> I guess this is just like a gift of mine or something. All right, so it's like 150 grams of this. You want to carry the one. That's... Wait, what? Well, alrighty. So this will need a slight adjustment since two of these portions are undersized. Seems even with the additional flour I added, this dough will still only make three lobiani. Like we did with the pampushki dough from the borscht video, you will need to shape the dough into balls using the same technique. 
Gently work the dough into a ball by bringing the top and sides of the dough surface into the bottom center of the dough ball, sort of like an infinitely collapsing belly button. The dough will get smoother and smoother the more you work it. No diggity. If the dough is too sticky, simply dust with a thin layer of flour and continue to work the dough. The dough will soon have a smooth and supple surface and maintain its ball shape. Once they are ready, set on the counter to proof for an additional 15 to 25 minutes while your oven preheats and you shape your bean balls. <laughs> bean balls. Trust me, this feels every bit as wrong as it looks, but I promise it's for a good cause. With well-washed hands, you'll form the lobio, which we made in the last video, into balls that will serve as the filling for our lobiani. If you don't want to go through the trouble of making a complex filling, just boil, drain, spice, and mash any dark bean that you like. Make sure that the bean balls have the structural integrity to maintain their nightmarish shape and appearance. Soupy or wet beans will not work for this dish. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but wash your hands. Lavate las manos. Lavate las manos! Lavate las manos! With your dough rested and a scorching hot preheated oven, we are now ready to start shaping our lobiani. You can lay the dough out on a well floured work surface and press it gently into a disc like shape, but don't roll it out. Place one of your bean balls on top of the dough and gently pull the sides of the dough up and over the ball and tightly crimp the seam shut. This will fully envelop your bean ball in what is hopefully an even layer of dough. Flip the sphere over and gently press flat, making sure to carefully extend the bean filling to the outer edges of the dough as you work it out. If the bean filling is too close to the surface, flip the lobiani over and roll out on the other side. Once you feel like the beans are evenly distributed and the lobiani is perfectly round, roll it out with a rolling pin. This lobiani ended up way too thick, should have been rolled out another half inch. Remember the dough rises in the oven. Score the top of your lobiani to allow any steam to escape. And here's my second lobiani. You can see that I rolled it out much thinner than the first. I use a preheated pizza stone, but a pan will also do just fine. Oh yeah, baby. The specific cooking surface you use doesn't really matter. Just make sure that it is preheated along with your oven. You want the oven to be quite hot since these things cook really quickly, usually about 12 to 15 minutes. Check to make sure that they are cooking evenly, and once the dough is risen and the surface starts to darken, remove from the oven to cool. Let rest on a wire rack baking sheet if you have one. If not, any surface that allows for airflow will do. While the loviani is still hot from the oven, brush on the oil of your choice. Olive oil works amazingly here, however, a garlic and chili infused olive oil really adds a subtle yet noticeable layer of flavor to your bean bread. If you aren't taking the vegan approach to your lobiani, you can give it a rather sensual butter rubdown. Either way, just a bit of fat added to this rather lean and super carby dish is a must. So there you have it, lobiani. This vegan friendly, super portable, and always delicious Georgian wonder. And while Khachapuri, the cheesy version of lobiani, is championed as a national dish of Georgia, I feel like Lobiani deserves just as much respect and appreciation. From the unconscionably overpriced ultra-modern restaurant versions to the humble and dirt-cheap street food versions, Lobiani is a Georgian classic. Eat as a side to a larger meal or simply nibble on it throughout the day as you explore the steep and twisting streets of Tbilisi. Just be sure to wash it down with a big-ass glass of wine. What other Georgian dishes do you guys think deserve a little bit more love and respect? What would you guys think of a wine tasting episode? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, eat well friends. <laughs>